I know you're gonna dig this. This is Ryan McGlynn, host of the Funk Music Hall of Fame and Exhibition Center's award-winning show, Funk Chronicles, recorded live here at DATV Studios in Dayton, Ohio. And now my studio guest is Hollis Melson, formerly of The Sun. Hello, how are you? Fine. Doing just wonderful. How about yourself? I'm doing well. So happy to have you on Funk Chronicles today. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. One of the things we want to talk about is your career as a musician with the group Sun, which came out of Dayton, Ohio. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things that I found out about you is that you were one of the few artists that we know uh, during that era uh, with like with Sun, mm -hmm. that had not had any uh, musical experience. Tell us about how you got started in the music industry. Your, your instrument is the bass. Bass guitar. Well, uh, I had had a, I got a guitar at a young age from listening to the TV when they was playing cowboy songs. I was impressed by that. I had got a guitar, but I uh, didn't learn too much from that. It wasn't until I came to Dayton, Ohio. and When did you come to Dayton? I came to Dayton, Ohio the summer of 1962 to visit and ended up not going back. I think I had ran away. <laughs> ah, from? From Georgia. Okay. And uh, so I was begging them to buy me a guitar, and so they eventually bought me a guitar, and I was always out in the yard practicing all of the time because I wasn't allowed to practice inside the house because it wasn't really hitting, you know. And I think somebody just seen me out in the yard one day and said, they had said, well, we need a bass player. And I was like, well, I don't know how to play bass. They said, well, we can show you everything you need to do. And I looked at them like, well, you must can perform miracles then. <laughs> <laughs> they said, yeah. I said, I can show you everything you need to do. So they took me over there, and we learned about five songs. And who were they? Uh, I was the Majestics at the time. Okay. Uh, Chris Jones, Byron Bury, Philip Bass was in the group at the time. We learned about five songs to play in the talent show, and I've been playing ever since. Okay, so when we talk about the talent shows, just for everybody doesn't know, but, but back in the 60s, uh, the high schools used to have talent shows. Mm -hmm. Roosevelt, you, you went to Roosevelt, Roosevelt correct? Roosevelt, 65. And then there was Dunbar, there was Roth. Mm -hmm. Was Roth then? Yeah, yeah Roth. Roth. We had so, talent shows at Roth High School also. So you'd have the Battle of the Bands. We'd have the Battle of the Bands. So the first band that you played with was? The Majestics. The Majestics, okay. Uh -huh. and, and that was mostly the Battle of the Bands was with the Majestics. And so what happened when the change came about, what somewhere the 1972 music kind of changed from R&B to a rock style type music. Because groups like Three Dog Night, groups like Blood, Sweat, and Tears, and all these kind of people were selling out, and the Motown Review, which had been the biggest thing going, wasn't doing anything anymore. And so somebody was telling us that we need to change our music from R&B to what was being played then. So we kind of switched over and was doing, I don't know, rock and roll or whatever it was called, but it wasn't R&B. 
Was it the funk? Yeah, well, they call, it was the funk, far as we know. Yes. <laughs> you know, so, uh, and that was the uh, thing with the overnight low, and, and then up, led up to Sun was. Now, how'd you get to Sun? Uh, so, overnight oh, oh, so, low eventually folded. Okay, so you went from the Majestics. To the overnight low. Overnight low. Who was in the overnight low? Byron Bird, Chris Jones, me, John Wagner. Harry McLeod. Oh, and Harry. Clarence Willis, that's what the Ohio Players was in the Majestics okay. and the Overnight Low. Okay, so some of the members from the Majestics were yeah. in Overnight, Overnight Low. Low. Okay, yeah. so we went from the Majestics yeah. to the Overnight Low. Yeah. And then you went to Sun. Sun. So somewhere in there, did, was that before you went to the military or after? Majestics, I went to the military during the Majestics time. Because I come back from the military in 1968, not really expecting to get with the Majestics. But the bass player that they had at the time was trying to play basketball, and he wasn't showing up. And I came back just in time, and I was able to pick up where I left off, which was very good, and I was happy about that. And I uh, uh, had doing some playing in the military. And so once I was back with the Majestics, it was just Majestics, Overnight, Low, and Sun at that point. Okay, so when, when did you officially, you recorded with Sun. Recorded so, with Sun, yeah. Yeah, so when you became with Sun, wh when did you be get with Sun? Sun came out in 1976. We started recording in 1975. And Sun came out in May of 1976, and so... From 1976 till 1978, I was with Sun, and at that point, things kind of changed, and I was doing something else. Okay, so let's talk about your time with Sun. Okay. Okay. Um, who was in Sun when you were there? Sun was Hollis Melson, Kim Yancey on drums, Sean Sanders on lead guitar, Dean Hummins was on keyboards. Byron Bird played saxophone, Chris Jones played trumpet, and John Wagner played trumpet when we came out initially in 19, when we started recording in 1975. And that was the group that came out in 1976, but they eventually added some more people on later. Okay, so, so tell me, what was three highlights of playing with Sun? Well, I guess the number one highlight was with me was when we first went to California in May of uh, 1976, and we played at the Oakland Coliseum on a show that had George Clinton and the Funkadelics, had Booster Collins and the Rubber Band, Booster Collins and the Rubber Band Band, that had all of James Brown's people that had been with him, oh. like Fred Wesley, Sinclair, Maceo, and they came out that night, and, you know, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, all of these great people, whatever, you know, that we was up against, and I didn't really think about it, because I'm thinking if I had, I might have been intimidated, you know, and we performed that night, and to me, it was the greatest performance of all time, for some reason, and I uh, was real happy with that night, but... You know, to come up against all of those greats like that, that night, uh, me was just the greatest feeling of all time. How old were you then? Uh, in 1976, I was 30 years old. Well, that was a heck of an experience during that time. And then what's your other two highlights that you would well, say? Well, I guess playing at the Apollo, we played at the Apollo with James Brown on a show that... It was kind of after his, because this was in 1978, I believe it was, or 77 or somewhere around through there. And, you know, James Brown had been really hot in, 19, in the 60s. And, uh, of course, playing at the Apollo was big. And we had also did a, a James Brown TV show, because James Brown had a TV show in Atlanta, Georgia, called Super Shock, that a lot of people I don't think know about. And that was a highlight, was uh, the James Brown Super Shock and the James Brown Apollo thing. And, of course, the Oakland Coliseum thing was three of my highlights, I think, of my life. 
But well, it was a lot of them that I was really happy with. When, when you look back over your career, could you, what were some of the three most disappointing things that happened in your career? Some of the three most disappointing things, uh, uh, I don't, I guess, I didn't go as far as I could have gone or would like to have gone because for one reason or the other, things kind of fell apart. Was one of the things that I would have liked to have uh, accomplished and well, what is that? What's one of the things you would like to have accomplished? Well, I would have liked to have been, you know, more, did more recordings probably because I never really got a chance to record a lot of the stuff that we wanted to record. So that's one of the things I would have liked to have did, did more recording probably. Uh, the ones that I did record went very well and uh, I wonder sometimes you know, it could have been more. You know, if I had had the opportunity, which I never really got that opportunity again, but I would have liked to record it more and probably did more. You know, if you were going to give advice to uh, musicians, upcoming musicians today, what, what would be uh, some words of encouragement that, from your learning experiences that you would like to share? Well, of course, the number one thing is to learn the business because, as I heard one of your co-workers say one time, it's called music business, you know, and you really need to know the business and know what you're getting into as far as contracts, uh, uh, writer's rights and all kind of stuff like that. Uh, of course, you know, a lot of the musicians came along then, didn't have a lot of music background, some of us, and of course you, you need, you know, to know your music. Uh, and, you know, uh, mus being a mu uh, musician is like a servant, a servant to the people and you kind of, one of the songs that said, if you give the people what they want, they'll give you what you want. So uh, the, the business and the music education and being a servant, you're serving to the people. Uh, and so musicians get their, in, their inspiration from the audience. Yeah, well, they're supposed to. Yes, <laughs> yes. I don't, you know. Uh, get your inspiration from the audience and you kind of play off of them. You know, they'll let you know what they like and what they don't like. And so you kind of go from there, you know. So when you were, uh, where were some of the fa favorite, your favorite cities when you were touring with Sun? Well, I guess probably my favorite city was Los Angeles, California. Uh, New York. I liked uh, New York, uh, Atlanta, of course. I was being that, Georgia being my hometown, that was a, a very good experience playing in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, but a lot of little small towns in, that I liked in Kentucky, maybe, what, Hopkinsville, Kentucky, and Nashville, Tennessee, which is not a small town, but it, it was one of my favorite cities and everything. Uh, uh, just to mention a few, what, Columbia, South Carolina, Charlotte, places like that, I enjoyed. And so when you would go to those cities, were, were they always in um, arenas or were they in nightclubs? I mean, what, Most what kind of, of this tell, stuff. tell me about, uh, uh, more about when, when Sun went to do a show, where was it? How was it? Sun mostly played in arenas. Arenas, okay. And we played in stadiums. We played at the one in Atlanta, they called the Atlanta Jam. That was played at the stadium. And what, everybody was there. Booster Collins, Ohio players, Commodores, Bohannon. And it was a 12-hour show. It started at 
12 that day, which we was the first group on, and it ended, I think the Ohio players went on about 1 o'clock that morning. Oh, my. And Lots of people. Oh, it was a lot of people there. They, in fact, they had a stampede that day. Somebody, it was a uh, 4th of July weekend, and somebody shot off some firecrackers, and they thought it was a gun, and it was a stampede that day. Uh, but we had, uh, Oakland was the Coliseum, but in L.A. we played at the Shrine Auditorium, which was really nice. Uh, well, when you're playing with a group, uh, and everyone has a different uh, role mm -hmm. because of their instrument. Yeah. Um, what what's what's life like being in a group as you tour? Well, <laughs> it's you could say it's good, but it can be kind of complicated, of course. Uh, but as long as you know what you're supposed to do you know, you can do it well, but uh, as far as, I call it a zone. Everybody has a zone, and you kind of stay in your zone, and you don't get in nobody else's zone, and it goes, it goes well. As long as you stay in your zone, I'll say, and do it like that. Uh, but other than that, it's, not hard to do, you know, once you know what you're supposed to do. You know, we were, uh, we were talking about uh, how drugs became such an integral part of um, the music scene during yeah. those times and, and that you expressed how you had uh, escaped that. And, and so tell, tell, tell us a little bit about that. I mean, you know, the, the drug culture was very, very prevalent. Yeah, well, the drug culture was very prevalent at the time, and I, for some reason, had realized that, and I wanted to prepare myself for that. So one of the things that I did was I spent a lot of time reading the Bible before I went. And in fact, I spent so much time reading the Bible that some people told me, that something was wrong with me. They say, well, you read the Bible too much. I'm saying, well, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think you read enough. I think <laughs> it's the problem or whatever. And I'm thinking, you know, that kept me from drugs and a lot of different women and a lot of things that I didn't want to do. But, but I knew, for instance, being in Hollywood, See, here I am, I'm just a little small town young man that's never been to Hollywood, and I didn't really get involved with people for that reason. You know, I was always with somebody that could make sure I don't get in no trouble, and I was never running off with somebody that you don't know who you're dealing with and stuff like that, you know. Because I think that's maybe what happened with some people. They run off with somebody they think is okay, and everybody that act okay is not okay, and everybody that act like they like you and don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, so I was blessed that I was able to escape that, and I worked hard to try to make sure it don't happen because I know drugs and that don't go together. And I was raised differently. Uh, I was just afraid of drugs. And so I was blessed to be able to escape that, and thanks the Lord for the blessing. And yeah, you know, uh, I, I think that's an interesting story to tell about because we read and hear so much about how folks' careers were uh, derailed mm -hmm. be, because of the fluent yeah. uh, drug culture that was there. And you know, and every, sometimes we we see what's uh, what's wrong becomes right, and yeah. and uh, to be strong enough to deter yourself away from that. Uh -huh. Did you write music or did you? Or I did, mostly did, just played music. The songs that I did, I mostly I did the music and somebody else did the lyrics, uh, which mostly uh, Chris Jones and I had did stuff together. And uh, I would just, uh, I remember on one song that I did, I was just playing a bass line 
and he heard it, and next thing I know, he got lyrics and everything to go with it. Okay. <laughs> Just like that. What song was that? That was called Sun Power. Sun Power. And see, and there was another one called what? Oh, I can't think of the name of it now. But Sun Power was one of them that we had that I had was playing just playing a bass line on. It was one of those disco lines. Dun, 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 dun. It, you know, because disco is dun, 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 dun. It was something like that, and uh, we kind of changed it up so it wouldn't be. And I just mostly did music lines, or now, guitar lines, or bass lines, stuff like that. To you, why why do you believe it's important that we have the, the Funk Music Hall of Fame and Exhibition Center? Well, as it turned out, now they're telling us that we were, has influenced music more in the United States than any other city per capita. So uh, we must have had something going on there that was special. Or, or you know, you're, you're telling me about how important it is for the Funk Music Hall of Fame. It's important for people to, I don't know, I guess it's hard for me to explain right now. I just... I need to, need to think about that a little bit more, but uh, it's kind of hard for me to explain right now. But it's very important uh, to just keep it going because we have uh, done something special. And I think one of the special things about Dayton, Ohio, was that all of our music, it was different from the other music, and all of the bands that come out of Dayton, Ohio, was different and nobody sounded alike. Now, now that, that, you know, that's a, a very um, uh, state, correct statement to the fact that um, each group yeah. that came out of Dayton, even though the groups interacted and, inter and sometimes right. interchanged with one another, the right. players, yeah. each particular group had its own unique right. sound. And that's what I was most impressed with, you know, and I don't know how, what that was about because when I first started playing, I was a James Brown fanatic and I was an Ohio Players fanatic and I was going around <laughs> trying to be like them, but once I hooked up with the Majestics and the Overnight Low and all of this, they wouldn't let me do that. You know, they kind of made me do my own thing which I'm really glad. <laughs> well, you know, one of the things, uh, Hollis, that, that has really, that I don't know if we really touched on it enough, is that you are what we would consider a self-made right. uh, musician. You, you didn't do music. No, I didn't, I didn't go to my first music class until I had been playing for a long time. In fact, when Sun came out, uh, my music background, you know, I didn't really know C major from C minor. It wasn't until later that I learned the difference, because sometimes I was playing C major when I was supposed to be playing C minor. <laughs> well, what, what also made the music unique? Yeah, also made it unique or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And I uh, would always kind of do it my way, because a lot of stuff that I would play, I wouldn't listen to it. I just, you know, I wouldn't listen to it to, to, to see how it's supposed to go or whatever. I just kind of play it my way without listening to it because you don't really want to do that, you know, listen to it and play it like that. <laughs> you know, you kind of, you want to do what you feel and kind of how you feel and then if everybody's in agreement with that, then there it is, you know. And then if it needs changing or anything, you can do that. Uh, tell me, in... in what would you uh, recommend or suggest to upcoming musicians or, or your story as a former member of Sun? What would you want people to know that they may not know about you and your experiences? About me and my experience? Well, I always thought my uh, situation was unique because of the fact that I didn't have a lot of... Uh, music background. I didn't have a, a lot of business background. I never really intended to do anything like that. I was just 
planned to come. I wanted to play the guitar, and I was working on it, and uh, and it just happened because I guess I had put so much time into trying to play the guitar. Uh, but when it came around, I was able to do so. And one of the things is is like people don't think it's it's important to play the scale all the time when you're trying to learn how to play the guitar because that just seems so <laughs> mediocre and you don't want to do that. But that's the most important thing that you can do is just play the scale, you know. I mean, you need to play that every day. And eventually, you can hear where the chords are at and you can hear what's going on from the scale. And uh, so that's one of the things you know, that you need to do, know, know, your, know what you're doing, you know, know about music and, and know what you need to do to kind of get to where you're going. If you want to be uh, rich and famous, which some people want to be rich and famous, you know, I mean, there's a lot of work you got to do for that and, and you kind of have to make things happen. Sometimes, you know, a lot of times I think going to the top is kind of like standing in line because they only do seem like they only do one at a time. <laughs> and when this one go out, you come in. And then the other one is kind of waiting until that one go out or whatever. But there's a lot of people now that's on top, you know, which before, you know, when I guess when James Brown was on top, you know, uh, it wasn't a lot of people that was on top, you know, but it's different today because there seems to be so many opportunities for so many people, and it's a lot out there money-wise and opportunity-wise, and so if you have your skills and your business together, you can, you can do it. And never, what said, never give up your dream and just you know, if it haven't come yet, just keep on working hard, and I suspect it'll come providing you have the right everything to go with it, I say. Well, thank you, Hollis Melson, formerly of Sun. Okay, thank you. This is Ryan McGlynn, host of the Funk Music Hall of Fame and Exhibition Center's award-winning show, Funk Chronicles. Until the next time, Keep it funky. Keep it fun. Thank you.